Okay, we should be like this. Um, what is this one? Hold on. You see anything? Okay, something's happening. We follow the conversation. Okay, I have the item here. Yeah, is there anything? Yes, you're right. Okay, I want to see if we can, if we switch between the screens. Um, so you should see, you should see John. I don't see John at the moment. Okay, I want to see if we can, if we switch between the screens. Um, Almost there, hold on. I can see John now. Yes. Okay, John, we're good to go. Um, okay. Let me just. Okay, you could probably close those now because we'll be recording. Um, all right, my name is Ivan Fien. Thank you for watching this very first Make Money Club webinar. Um, I have on the call right now um, a very close and uh, favorite associate of mine. I really like John very much. His name is John Broom. He's from Mind Power. We've been uh, working in each other's circles for the last two years. I've seen him. I've been able at conferences, etc. And uh, somehow he came uh, to our BNI chapter about three months ago. And uh, we started working together, referring business, etc. BNI is obviously something uh, for another time that we could talk about. But um, I invited John to talk to us today about his, what he does and to teach us how to cultivate a successful mindset. Um, so this is our very first uh, webinar for the Make Money Club, and John is our first guest. I'm very honored to have him. and. Um, Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set, set John up, and um, we are going to go back and forth. You'll see the screen going back and forth, um, but I'm going to let um, John speak uh, largely throughout the call, and um, he's going to teach us how to do this and uh, give us some value, etc. And at the end, we're going to do a little uh, call to action, etc. Um, John, in the meantime, while this call is going on, I'm going to put this uh, webinar onto, uh, onto Facebook, etc. I'll share the link with you in Skype if you want to do that while you're talking, but I don't think it's wise to try and share social media links while you're busy presenting. Um, so, John, my name, thank you for joining us on this call. <coughs> Pleasure. It's nice being here, Ivan. Thank you for inviting me. All right, John, uh, the, we had a session last week, Thursday, really, really mind-blowing. Um, from being with, uh, sitting with John for about an hour and a half, two hours, I know that if there's anything in this world that you want to achieve, if there's anything that you want to do, uh, it is absolutely possible. But there, are, there is certain ways that how you get there and how... Uh, you have to you have to be really surgical and break down the process. To there's a lot of different things that you have to look at, etc. I'm not sure if John's going to go through that on this call, but um, I invited John to teach us how to cultivate a a successful mindset. So this is the success. Uh, this is the mindset that's that would be ready and to steer you into the right direction, direction, into having success in your life. So, John, over to you. Please teach us how do we get this uh, successful mindset. Thanks, Ivan. Yeah, let's just start off by, by having a look at a little formula. And this formula says M plus S plus T equals success. Now, what this means, M is mindset. S is strategy, T are tactics, which if all that done correctly should bring us success in life. 
But all of these formulas, or whichever variation of that that you find, they always start with mindset or attitude. So I'm going to talk about mindset today, and I'm going to break that down into a couple of different areas. I'm going to start talking about conditioning. Let all our, our listeners understand how we end up the way that we are. And then we'll look at the traditional ways of helping turn that around, like affirmations, visualization, meditation. I'll give some advice on using those techniques. And then I'll present to you some technology products called subliminal audios that you can use to do this all automatically. But let's start off with conditioning. Now, I'm sure all of us have been to school. Now, what happens? We get sent to school and teachers say to us things like, Ah, man, you're stupid. Now, then all the kids in the class grab onto this. Ah, teacher says you're stupid. They tease us endlessly. This sits in our subconscious mind, forms part of our self-image. And we go through life being like that because that's what we believe about ourselves. Now, the brain scientists liken the subconscious mind to a computer. As you know, computers only work according to programming. But so do us human beings. We work according to the program in our subconscious mind, otherwise known as our self-image. But what's a bit off-putting about the whole self-image thing? They tell us that it's basically formed by the time we're 12 years old. So even us adults are walking around on this planet with the mindsets that were formed when we were very young, most of which are no longer valid and probably weren't even valid when they put them in in the first place. And if we go back in time and have a look at how this conditioning or brainwashing, if you like, how this conditioning had limited us in the past, in the 1950s, if we've got any, any runners, athletes out there listening, I'm sure you, we've all heard about the four-minute mile. Back in the 1950s, we couldn't run a mile under four minutes. They called it the four-minute barrier. The belief was doctors used to believe that if we ran a mile quicker than four minutes, the human heart would explode. Anyway, we proved that to be very incorrect. Roger Bannister broke that barrier for the first time in May 1954. Within 28 days, so did six other athletes. And all of a sudden, what had changed? Just the mindset, that belief. Oh, is possible. All right, let's go out and do it. But up until then, that belief that it couldn't be done had limited the whole of mankind. That was a global limiting belief. Does that make sense, Ivan? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, so that was a global limiting belief. Another example Next time you go past the circus, go and have a look at the elephants and how they tie them up. And you'll find that here's this huge big animal, there's a little rope around his foot, there's a peg in the ground, and that elephant is tied up. And it's because when he was a little guy, it was a heavy chain around his foot tied to a tree stump. He tried to get away, but he couldn't. So what did the elephant do? Oops, he stopped trying. Now that limitation is set in his brain, it just takes a little rope to tie him up. How valid is that limitation? It's not valid at all. That elephant can push over a house. And I think a lot of the time, we nearly human elephants with all this emotional garbage that we carry around with us. And that's also why it's so difficult for people to change habits. You know, if you take things like losing weight, stopping smoking, those are things traditionally that people battle with. But take weight loss, for example. People who want to lose weight do all the things necessary at a conscious level that diet and exercise, and many people get down to where they want to be. Nine times out of ten, what happens after that? We get all up again. Because our self-image is still one of being large and not one of being smaller. Now, I, I like to liken this to a refrigerator. Everyone's fridge has a, a, a thermostat in it. And we set that thermostat to a certain temperature. So if you leave the door open for too long, the temperature goes up, that thermostat kicks in and brings it down again. The door closes, it gets too cold, the thermostat kicks out and brings it back up to that level again. And that's the function of our subconscious mind, to maintain the status quo. And the status quo is the conditioning we've been subjected to since little, our belief system. So we believe there's lots of money out there, that's what we're going to allow into our experience. If we believe people out there are all broke, that's what we're going to see. And of course, money is a very good example of this as well. You know, they've done research into the case studies of lottery and sweepstake winners, overnight millionaires. And in most cases, in a year or two's time, that money's gone. Lost, wasted, spent, given it away, it's finished. 
And it's because our self-image of money might figuratively lie at a level, I'm just drawing a little hand, line with my hand, it might lie, lie at that level. So any increase in that or any decrease for that matter, our self-image always ensures that it shrinks back or grows back up to that, that level, much like that thermostat in the fridge. Now, but you take a guy like Richard Branson, take all his money away, stick him in a poor country like Afghanistan, in the middle of a war where he can't even speak the language, and leave him there for a year. What do you think, Ivan, what do you think uh, Richard Branson would be doing? Yeah, it'll probably be um, 12 months and he'll be a success again. Absolutely. I mean, he's been bankrupt half a dozen times. These guys know how to do it. And the only difference between the wealthy guys on this planet and the not so wealthy guys is the way they think. But, and this is a big but, it's not conscious level thinking that counts, it's subconscious thinking. If it was conscious level thinking, all these courses that people go on, like sales courses, motivation seminars, self-empowerment, people come back off these things and they fly for two or three days. And then crash, back where they started from, because nothing has changed. All the old beliefs about themselves and their abilities, their predominant thought patterns, their attitudes are still the same. So even though the motivators get us all fired up, very quickly our self-image takes over and says, Whoa, I don't do things this way, this is how I do things. Which means, back to doing what we've always done, which means, back to getting what we've always got. Now, we do all get stuff in our lives. Let's call them results. The results we, and those results might be results we like or maybe results we don't like. But those results are determined by the things that we do, how we behave, what our habits are. Habits, our habits always determine our success in life. And the habits are the things that we do too much of or too little of and the things that we don't do. Those are also habits, habitual ways of doing things. And all these behaviors are determined by how we think and how we feel, our emotional states. And that's all determined by what we believe at a subconscious level. So if we don't like the results we're getting in life, we're going to go back and work on ourselves, change what we believe about ourselves and our world, and I'll explain that just now. Then we'll start thinking differently, we'll start behaving differently, we'll start getting different results in an ongoing, consistent way. Does that make sense? That makes sense? Does, okay, yeah. good. Okay, now I said we change what we believe about ourselves and our world. Now, the reason for saying that, let's say, for example, somebody's out there and they have this belief that, yeah, there's no money out there. People are battling, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of money out there. Well, there's part of the brain called the reticular activating system, which is the brain stem. And that's the part of the brain that either allows information in or keeps it out depending on our current priorities and on our belief system. Okay? So let me, let me use an example. Let's say, for example, I'm out during the day, seeing clients, come lunchtime, my stomach starts rumbling. Now my brain needs food. So it starts looking for Nando's or Kentucky or whatever. Then all of a sudden, my petrol gauge goes down, the, the light bleeps me. Now the brain doesn't see the food shops anymore. The priorities changed. It needs petrol urgently. So it's only going to allow me to see petrol shops, garages. That's the function of that part of the brain. Now, you know, it's well documented. You can have a, a multiple car accident at an intersection. And there's five people that saw this, eyewitnesses, and they get a, a, a report from each of those five people. Every report that they got from those people is different because everybody saw something different because they saw that through their own filters. And then there again, we're talking about that particular activating system. That's our filter. So it allows certain things in and doesn't allow other things to come in. So back to the money side of things again. Yeah, if, if one's belief is that there's not a lot of money out there, we're not going to see the money. But, you know, just consider the pick and pay on a Saturday morning and see how much money is going through the tilts. There's huge amounts of money in this country. Now, the effect of inflation on the economy, and this was told to me by a, um, an economist recently. He said the effect of inflation on the economy means that every month there is more money in circulation. Not less money, more money. 
So every month in this country, there's more money flying around. We've just got to kind of make sure that we get our part of the money that we want. Yeah. Okay, so that's why I'm saying we've got to change what we believe about our world outside there as well as the world inside of us. Does all that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, good. So we need to change what we believe about ourselves and our world. Then we'll start thinking differently, behaving differently. We'll start getting different results on an ongoing consistent basis. Now, the power of the subconscious mind is well documented. You can read it in books all over the place. But one of the stories that stuck with me over the years out of one of John Keogh's books. He wrote about a guy in the States working on the railways. And this guy was working in one of these refrigerated rail cars. Remember they transport frozen beef and things? And he inadvertently locked himself into this thing. And he banged and shouted and screamed, but nobody heard him. So he wrote on the inside what was happening to him. And he wrote there, I'm getting colder and colder. A little while later he wrote, I'm slowly starting to freeze to death. These might be my last words. And they were his last words. I opened that thing up the next day and the guy was dead. But the tragic part of the story, that refrigeration unit was broken. It wasn't working. The temperature inside there was 15 degrees Celsius. There was more than enough air. He literally thought himself to death. Now that's tragic. That's hugely, hugely tragic. But it just shows the power of the human mind when it comes to things like life and living. So what I'm saying here is if anyone wants to make improvements in whatever aspect of their life they'd like to improve, they've got to make the changes at a subconscious level. Otherwise, like the weight loss guys, we're going to get this roller coaster ride, change behaviors, get new results, get back to eventually doing the same behaviors again, which means we're going to start getting the same things in our lives again. So that's the key to success in life is changing what we believe about ourselves. In other words, changing our mindset. And most people say, yeah, that sounds about right, but well, you know, how do we do this? Well, there's many ways. You know, people go and see coaches like myself. I teach them processes, help them with strategies, or they go and see psychologists. We do psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, gestalt therapy, NLP, all these different kinds of therapies, which can be very effective. But of course, they take time and they cost a lot of money. Nowadays, sublim um, psychology fees that the medical aids pay back is somewhere in the region of around about 700 grand for an hour session, 700, 750. But many of the psychologists are charging as much as 12.50 an hour. And generally they need their patients there 10 to 12 times to sort out an issue. Then they find out a lot of other stuff it needs working on as well. So they kind of keep people locked into this process for as long as possible. So it takes time, it costs a lot of money. Now if we read the books, authors like John Keogh, Anthony Robbins, Edward de Bona, Napoleon Hill, Deepak Chopra, Louise Hay, Stephen Covey, The Secret, all these good self-help gurus who've changed the lives of millions of people on this planet. They teach us to do two basic things, visualization and affirmations. Now, visualization are the pictures we have in our minds, affirmations are positive statements or negative statements that we repeat over and over again. Eventually they sink in and we start being like, being like that. But let's just give some advice here on, on these techniques, first of all. So let's talk about affirmations. Affirmations are statements of things that you'd like to be true about yourself. For example, I'm a happy, loving and kind person. I'm strong, I'm confident, I trust myself, I believe in myself. Now there's five rules for formulating your own affirmations. Rule number one is they've got to be in the first person. I am a happy, loving, and kind person. Okay? So first person. Second rule, they've got to be in the present tense. I am. Now this is important because for the subconscious mind, there is no past and there is no future. There is only the present. So we've got to use it in the present tense. I am a happy, loving, and kind person. And then they've got to be positive. Now that goes without saying. But let's say, for example, I'm saying this to myself now. I'm saying I don't waste time. Does that sound okay, Ivan? Yes, yes. No, it's actually very bad because the subconscious mind doesn't pick up the don'ts and the nots. I don't waste time is read as I waste time. Okay. So, you know, Job in the Bible said, that which I have feared has come upon me. Showing that what you focus on, you attract into your life. So a general rule in life from now onwards for everyone, all our listeners, is you've got to focus on the things that you want 
and not on the things that you don't want. So they've got to be in the first person, present tense, they've got to be positive, and then we've got to use repetition. Now, how did we learn our multiplication tables at, at school? Over and over and over again with repetition. Quickly, Ivan, question to you. Top of your head, what is seven times seven? 49. Very easy, hey. Okay, how about 17 times 17? That would be 149. <laughs> it's actually 289. But the point I wanted to make is that we only learnt up to 12 times 12. Up to there is permanent, it's automatic, it's part of us, it's who we are. And how did we put that in? With repetition, over and over and over again. So that's the key to those techniques. Another example for you quickly. What's the first thing that pops into your mind when you hear the word Coke? What do you think of? Refreshment. Okay, what's a Jaguar? A Jaguar is an animal. Ah, good. Most people say car or they think the animal on the side of the car because they're thinking about car. But have a look at the word Coke in the dictionary. You find that Coke is a derivative of coal. The stuff they burn in the power stations or don't burn in the power stations nowadays is Coke and coking coal. But we've been conditioned over the years by the advertisers to accept the fact that Coke is cold drink or drugs. Jagu is a motor car. Surf is washing powder. Quickly, blossom. What do you think? Of? Oh, good. If you're a woman, you guaranteed you'd have said margarine. Because that's what the advertisers have done to us. You see, this is all called conditioning. And this is how we end up the way that we are. So, back to affirmations. First person, present tense, they've got to be positive, And we've got to use repetition. Like we get conditioned by the advertisers over and over and over again, we've got to condition ourselves over and over and over again. I'm a happy, loving and positive person, or whatever the case may be. And particularly, we need to do that first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And the reason for this is, let's say we wake up in the morning, we've been sleeping. Now, there are four basic brain states that the neurosurgeons talk about. And these are measured on EEG, the electrical states in the brain. There's beta that we'd be in now, that's our wake away concentrating state. Beta, alpha, a little bit lower, theta, a bit deeper, delta, fast asleep. Now, when we sleep, we sleep in a delta, or as adults, in a very light delta. And when we wake up in the morning, we go through this, these gateways of the theta into the alpha state and into, into beta. But the alpha and theta states are where we have easier access into the subconscious mind. So that's why we should be doing these things first thing in the morning as we wake up, when we still got better access to the subconscious mind. And then last thing at night before we go to sleep, because once again, now we've come out of that beta brain state, down into alpha and theta where there's easy access into the subconscious mind. So that's the reason we do these things first thing in the morning and last thing at night and with repetition. And then of course the last, the fifth rule for using affirmations correctly is emotion. Now let's say I'm affirming to myself and I'm saying I'm a happy, loving and kind person. You know, that just ain't gonna cut it. Yeah, I'm a happy, loving and kind person. So Put some emotion into it. Put some feeling into it. You know, so if you're saying I feel fantastic today, then actually feel fantastic and let your voice say that you're feeling fantastic today. Now I'm wealthy. I'm rich. I attract money. Those things must all make you feel good inside. Okay, so those are the are the rules for using affirmations. First person, present tense, positive, repetition, emotion. Use them first thing in the morning, last thing at night, and. A guy like John Asera, for example, he says do them three times a day in the middle of the day as well. And this is how we can slowly start changing what we believe about ourselves, now particularly in the case of your members, in terms of financial abundance, and start reprogramming the subconscious mind. Because that program inside there, that's the thing that determines what happens in our lives. Right now, all of us listening here, guys, your lives are a mirror image of the thoughts and beliefs you hold at a subconscious level. But unfortunately, we don't know what those thoughts and beliefs are. It would be so nice if we can plug a computer into a human brain and say, ah, there's all the beliefs, those are the ones we've got to get rid of and just fix them. That would be easy. But of course, we don't have that facility. But there is a facility that does show what your belief system is. And that thing is called your life. So if you want to know what your beliefs about money and abundance are, just kind of have a look at your bank account at the end of the month, before payday. Not at the beginning of the month, at the end of the month. 
and that'll tend to show you where your beliefs lie about money. Okay, so that's the one technique called affirmations. Visualization is the other thing I want to discuss with our listeners today. And visualization, those are the pictures we have in our minds of the things that we want to have in our lives, or in most cases of the things that we don't want in our lives. Now, just to put a bit of clarity on that, Mother Teresa had a lovely thing. She said, if you're having an anti-war rally, I'm not interested. If you're having a peace rally, I'll be there, boots and all. Look at that subtle difference between anti-war and pro-peace. One case we're focusing on war, and the other case we're focusing on peace. So that's a very valid thing. Focus on what you want and not on the things that you don't want. Certainly handle the stuff that's going on, but keep your focus. Keep your eye on the ball of where you want to go. Okay. So with visualization, here we're going to start assembling pictures about the things that we would like to have in our lives. Be it the house, the money, the car, the yacht, the holiday home, the castle, whatever the thing is our listeners are wanting to have. Go and cut out pictures of these things and stick them up on your cupboard. I've got a lot of pictures here on my cupboard in front of me. Put the pictures on your cupboard wall or have a, a special board that you put your visualization pictures on. on. And then the idea is to get down into a low brain state. If, if any of the members here meditate, meditation is a very good gateway to get to the subconscious mind where we can start doing our affirmations and visualization more effectively because they zip straight into the subconscious mind. So I'm, I'm not going to teach you how to meditate. Uh, yeah, that's something the re listeners, readers can, listeners can go and establish for themselves. But it's a very good process because we start in these lowered states, we start using our brains more effectively. Particularly enhancing things like creativity, problem solving abilities, we enhance our intuition. Now, you know, nowadays, MDs of big companies are making decisions based on information. But there's so much information out there, we can't assimilate it all. When we start making decisions intuitively, that's where we take into account all the information that there is out there. And we do this by accessing these deep brain states, like the fetus brain state, where the brain also makes a lovely neurochemical called the DHEA hormone. And that's the muti that strengthens our immune system and helps us live longer. So there's huge amounts of benefit from meditating. But here specifically, I want to talk about it from a point of view of doing visualization correctly. Now, the whole visualization thing started back in the 1950s. Excuse me, 50s and 60s. In 1968, at the, Olymp the Summer Olympics, the East Germans won 15 gold medals. Eight years later, in 1976, they won 40 gold medals. They pushed the United States out into third. It was Russia, East Germany, USA. And everybody wondered how a small little country like East Germany, with 15 million people, could beat the United States, who've got 250 million people. Well, slowly feedback started coming from behind the then Iron Curtain of new training techniques that these guys were, were using. Besides physically training every day, they were also mentally rehearsing for success. And they taught this to the West, to, to the Americans, who took it back to Chicago University and tested these concepts on basketball players at Chicago University. And what they did was they got three groups of players together of approximately the same, same ability and tested their accuracy on throwing foul shots. Then they said to the first group, okay, you guys, you go and train for an hour every day for the next 30 days. Second group, you don't do anything. You don't do any, go anywhere near a basketball court. You don't even think about playing basketball. Third group, you don't go near a basketball court, but spend an hour every day with your, mind, your eyes closed, deeply relaxed, and in your mind's eye, picture yourself throwing those baskets successfully. <clears throat> Three, th 30 days later, they retested these guys. The guys that physically trained improved by 24%. The guys that did nothing showed no improvement. The guys that only mentally rehearsed improved by 23%, almost as much as the guys who actually physically trained. And it's because our subconscious mind, which is the thing that drives us through life, the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a vividly imagined event and a, sorry, between an actual event and a vividly imagined event. To the subconscious, playing basketball or imagining yourself playing basketball was the same thing. 
with the same results. So we can use visualization to help us reprogram the subconscious mind in terms of attracting the things into our lives that we'd like to have. Now, once again, there's a couple of rules here. And the big rule really is to use your all five senses when visualizing. So let's say, for example, somebody wants to have a holiday cottage at the coast. Okay. So first step is picture yourself in your holiday home with all the right furniture you want there, all the right color furniture, the curtains you want, the carpets you want. And then imagining on the front door, there's a big sliding glass door. When you slide it open, you walk outside and boom, you're right on the beach. So imagine yourself bending over and picking up a handful of sand. And this is dry sand now. And feel that sand running through your fingers. Okay? You're using the sense of feeling. Then walk down towards the water. Eventually you get into an area where the sand is a bit wet and it's a bit more firmer. It's more easy to walk there. And you kind of look behind you, you can see these footsteps following you. you know? Jeez, who's this coming behind me? Okay? Now, it's a bit warmer. It's a bit, the water, the, because it's wet, the, water, the sand is a bit cooler. As you walk down towards the water now, put your feet in the water. You can feel the water washing over your feet. Look out onto the horizon. And there's a boat, a big ship for sailing past in the background with a big red funnel and this white smoke coming out of the red funnel. Now we're bringing the vision, the sight aspect of our senses into it. Now the wind's blowing off the sea onto the land. Feel that wind blowing through your hair. Smell the salt air. You can smell it. Remember you at the sea, you can actually smell the salt air. Okay? And then taste on your lips. And after a while, you'll be able to taste the salt water on your lips. And there's seagulls flying around in the air. And you can hear them squabbling and shouting at each other. So now we brought all those senses into, be, into, into play. Sight, sound, taste, touch, smell. Okay? Now this it awakens different parts of the brain to help us imprint what we want onto the subconscious mind. So that's the big rule there, is get down into a layer, lowered brain state, use all five, all five senses while picturing the things that you want. And very careful as well, guys, picture what you want not the things that you don't want. Because really, if you picture the things you don't want, that's what you're going to be attracting into your lives. Okay, so we've spoken about conditioning, we've spoken about affirmations, visualization and meditation to a certain degree, meditation. Let's now have a look at some technology that's available to people to use to help reprogram the subconscious mind. You see, one of the things with affirmations Sorry about that. One of the things with affirmations, let's say, for example, someone's overweight. And they've got this affirmation that says, I'm slim and trim and healthy. And they're looking in the mirror at this large one. Conscious brain says, yeah, right. You've got to be joking. Look at me. Get real. And we screen it out. Because essentially, we're affirming something that is not true. Now, there's a technology called subliminal communication. Subliminal means below the level of conscious awareness. And this came to the public's attention back in the 1950s. There was a movie called Picnic. In between the frames of this movie, they flashed the messages, drink Coca-Cola, eat popcorn, just for a fraction of a second. Nobody actually saw it consciously. But a 58% increase in the sale of Coke and popcorn shows that it was picked up at a subconscious level and people acted on it. Now, at that stage, it was deemed so effective as an advertising medium that most states in the USA try to ban its use in advertising. But up until today, no actual legislation exists prohibiting its use. So I'm sure big companies are still using it to cook our brains to buy their products. We know of a case here recently in South Africa and a little while back as well, where one of our big telecommunication companies used and still does use subliminal advertising. And that's been told to me three times by staff members years apart, where there's smoke, there's a fire. And the more recent one is a young lady who said to me, yes, we do that. We call it creative advertising. Now, it's a bit scary when it happens on your own doorstep. But many companies have made subliminals available to the public in a form that you have some control over. Every one of my subliminal CDs, which I'll talk about just now, has got a copy of the subliminal script with it. So one can read what these positive reconditioning affirmations are and decide if it's appropriate or not. And of course, as a local product, if there's ever any doubt about the validity of the subliminal scripts, 
I can always take people into the recording studio and get the sound engineers to unlayer the music and the words. So I can show that what I'm saying on that piece of paper that accompanies the CD, that those are the words are actually there, no more and no less. Which takes all the fear away from using stuff like this. And I mentioned the fear aspect because way back in the 1960s, the heavy metal rap, rock bands were putting back masks, satanic and drug inducing stuff in their music. And that did happen. Now that's really scary. But what I'm saying here is that modern subliminals, one can use with certainty that they are actually legit and they won't do you any harm, they can only do good. Now, what we do, we go into the recording studio, we record positive affirmations in male voices and in female voices. And the reason for that is some people respond better to male voices, some better to female voices. So we try and cover as many options as possible. We then lay a music on top of it so we don't hear it consciously, and that way it bypasses that judgmental part of the conscious mind, gets directly into the subconscious where with repetition it makes change. By repetition, what I'm saying to my clients is expose yourself to the music for at least an hour a day for 60 days. Because it's subconscious, we don't need to pay attention to it. It plays in the background while we're working, driving, reading, eating, even while sleeping. Because when we sleep, our conscious mind sleeps, subconscious is wide open. So it really doesn't take any time out of our daily schedule to be effective. And that's a big plus for so many, you know, I'm too busy South Africans. On top of that, we have a guarantee that says, if you're not happy with the results after 60 days, I refund people's money. Which I've had to do 14 times in 22 years of business. So bottom line is we are getting results for people. Ivan, um, do we want to tell them that we're making some of these available through that other uh, up more, uh, top of the range um, product that you have? Yes, um, yes John, um, John, what we're going what to do is we're going to, we're going to um, make, make John, John, there's five of these audios that John has that we're going to make available on, um, on the Make Money Club. It's going to be part of something I call a, um, we call it an audio upgrade. Um, the price is not 100% yet. We're looking at um, about 45, 49 Rand, uh, where we are going to get one of the, I have one of the biggest and largest um, audio libraries of success mindset change um, products that, that is available. So. Um, for the club members that is um, that's currently there is an audio upgrade that will be being made available probably end of the month. Um, John's subliminal CDs and his um, CDs that has to do with business is going to be in this uh, a part and parcel of this. Um, John is um, going to work very closely with me in making this community um, simple through the the empowerment of our mindsets. So that's one of the things that we're working on. Um, so we're going to try and roll that out in the next couple of weeks. Um, with um, also just to um, say to anybody that um, the, the webinar that you're watching right now, um, if you're watching it outside of the members area, we just want to let you know that we have what we call a Make Money Club that John and myself and a good couple other people have also kind of started. Um, and our main objective is to help people to be successful in business and to make extra money through um, building passive income streams. We've had a lot of content that's already been released on the website um, and um, we're just going to go from strength to strength. So if you're interested in content like this that John has presented today, in the effort to cultivate for you a successful mindset, then um, that is something that um, you should definitely be a part of. The club is 400 Rand per month uh, or $30 and uh, inside you will get an incredible amount of content that will help you with new business ideas, um, how to make money online, um, different investment platforms. Uh, we give you online marketing, coaching, and training as well. Uh, we have John on board, which teaches us to to, to become successful in mindset. I also want to take the liberty of just um, giving the mic back to John. I wrap up this 
call and um, John just told us about some CDs. From the main five CDs that we discussed last, last Friday, just tell us what they are called or what are they priced at. Ivan, sorry, you were breaking up a bit there at the end. Can I tell them about the five CDs that will be in that package and what they're about? Yes, and okay. also the price. Also? Also the pricing of those, the pricing. Uh, okay. of those CDs. Yeah. All right, my CDs are normally 279 rand each. Are you making them available, these five available at a very beneficial price. But the five CDs on there are, first of all, the Creating Prosperity, Success and Abundance CD. Now, just a bit of explanation on that. I'm sure a lot of you people listening to this do have children. Now, just think about this. What is the first thing that a baby does with money? Baby sticks it in its mouth. So mommy says to the kid, and this is always mommy's fault, guys. Mommy says, get that out of your mouth, it's dirty. Now, of course, we tell them that it's filthy stuff. But our subconscious is a very literal thing. Of course, then we, off we go to church when we get a bit older and we learn things that people think the Bible says money is the root of all evil. It actually says the love of money is the root of all evil. But you know, this is how people get these crazy mixed up beliefs about money in abundance and push it away instead of attracting it to themselves. So we get those kind of beliefs turned around and start attracting more abundance into our lives. Then the second CD is the um, self-image, self-esteem and confidence CD, which is the most important one I make because that is the foundation of who we are as individuals. When we start growing as people, it's got to be built on a solid foundation. Our self-image is that foundation. But the thing is, self-image development isn't just for street sweepers, it's for presidents of countries. Bill Clinton, we all remember him, he used to get coached on issues of self-esteem by Anthony Roberts. But you know, you take a youngster in Pretoria, 22 years old, plays rugby for the Bulls and he's just the boy here. I'm just using an example now. And he's always standing on the box telling the world how great he is. If he had any sort of self-worth, he wouldn't need to do that, guys. That's merely bravado or vanchatheit, which masks low self-esteem, poor self-worth. So we cover self-image, self-esteem, self-confidence, assertiveness, positive attitude, enthusiasm and motivation, perseverance, all those leadership kind of qualities, as well as the anti-depression stuff and the forgiveness affirmations. Forgiveness is the opposite of anger and resentment, which are the most unempowering emotions we can find. So that's what's covered in the self-image CD. And then we have, we've included our relaxation and stress relief CD. Now, well, what happens with stress? When we get stressed, our brain frequency, as measured on EEG, goes way off the clock. But when we get stressed, we don't think clearly, we don't perform at our peak, we don't make good decisions. But over and above that bottom line is stress creates dis-ease. We get sick. The World Health Organization says that 80 to 90% of all illnesses are either directly or indirectly, guess what? Caused by stress. Now, financial stress is probably the worst kind of stress that anybody could ever suffer from. So this is important in terms of building financial abundance. And then we have a CD called Personal Effectiveness, which is all about overcoming procrastination. There's a lovely word in Afrikaans for procrastination, but say, slap gaat geit. And I think we're all guilty of that to a lesser or a greater degree. So that's about overcoming procrastination, being organized and efficient, time management, setting goals, achieving goals, but specifically about taking action. Remember earlier I spoke about that model, we get, we need to change what we believe about ourselves, then we'll think differently, and this one is about taking action, and then we'll start getting the results that we want in life. Okay, and the last one, the fifth one there, is about um, positive relationships, about improving existing relationships, attracting better new ones into our lives, recovering from bad past relationships, as well as the personal charm and charisma type things. And obviously that impacts all of us. We all have clients, colleagues, family, friends, neighbors, acquaintances, workmates, and how we interact with people often to a large extent determines how successful we're going to be in life. So those are the five that are included in that package Ivan was talking about. We have, another, we have 14 in total, so other stuff is available as well, but we're talking specifically about the financial type of stuff. So Ivan, that's back to me. Anything else you'd like me to add? No, I think that's it, John. Um, they are priced at $240.79. Uh, $279. $279. Um, you can contact John on johnbroom.co.za. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. 
John Bream, that's here, that's it, yeah. All right, so you can go and contact him about all these other products, etc. Um, I just wanted to add that John made a lot of references to the Bible, and he spoke of Job and uh, told a couple of stories. This is something that I can maybe just uh, finish the score with. There's three things that I uh, that I basically live by when it comes to your mindset on what you will have in the future, and it's this. And it's um, these are scriptures in the Bible, and this is the first one I want to look at. It says, "As a man thinks in his heart, so is he." And then there's another scripture reference that says, "Out of the abundance of the heart." The mouth speak, and then there is a scripture that says, "You will create the fruit of your lips." So whatever comes out of here, that comes out of here, eventually to here, that is what you will have in the future. So, um, John, what do you think of that? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. There's another one that I like as well. That's uh, in Saint Mark. You can read something to the effect of, "As a man, unto, unto him that believeth, all things are possible unto him that believeth." So it's back to what we believe about ourselves and our capabilities is the things that we're going to, to create in our lives. Yeah, okay. so well, well said there. Thanks, Ajit. At the end of the day, you believe that you can be a success, you will be a success. And then John gave us some tools on how to get there, etc. John, I want to thank you for joining me on this call. Um, we'll obviously work on some more content that we... Um, at the end of the day, my, my partnership or my working with you is for the interest of our members, to, for them to become successful, build businesses and get, get to the place where they, can, they believe that anything that they want is possible for them to get. So I want to thank you for watching this uh, webinar and thank you also to John Broom for joining me on this. Your very first webinar is going up, up on the website. Well, there, there. Not all I can make money club yet. Yes. Um, basically, three dollars per month, and uh, there's an incredible full members. Thank you for watching this um, this webinar, and uh, we're excited to get another guest like John. John, okay, for our next one. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.